I am honored to introduce our speaker for today, Dr. Nonilon M. Aspe. Dr. Donny Aspe is a professor of biology at the College of Science and Environment, Mindanao State University, Naawan, Misamis Oriental. He specializes in the taxonomy, systematics, and biodiversity of Philippine earthworms. He has described numerous earthworm species and works on molecular phylogenetics and biogeography of these organisms. He also has collaborations with other researchers on the use of earthworms uh, to explore their potential benefits to society. In addition, he conducts systematics and biodiversity studies on marine invertebrates. He obtained his uh, B.S. Marine Biology and M.S. Biology degrees from Mindanao State University, Iligan Institute of Technology. He finished his Ph.D. in Natural History Sciences from Hokkaido University, Japan. The National Academy of Science and Technology, Philippines, has conferred Dr. Aspe the Outstanding Young Scientist Award in 2018 in recognition of his exemplary contributions to the advancement of knowledge on the morphological and molecular characterization of Philippine earthworms. So everybody, let's all welcome Dr. Noni M. Aspe. Sir Noni. Good morning po sa lahat. Good morning, sir. Maraming salamat so may, po. Uh, may I now share my uh, presentation? Yes po. Please do, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for having me here. And uh, welcome to uh, uh, my presentation. Uh, I'm glad to see everyone here. So today I'll be presenting uh, my work in research. No? So it's called Unearthing the Philippine Earthworms, the shift from basic to applied research. And OK, so uh, currently I'm the only Filipino that's been actively working on the uh, taxonomy, systematics, and biodiversity of Philippine earthworms. And so I'll, I'll say to everyone, welcome to the world of Philippine earthworms. So you can see in these pictures, uh, giant uh, species that I have found in, in various places. So this is how I, keep my, my samples in the lab. So these are preserved in the formalin and I examine them uh, using the stereo microscope. Okay, so my work as a researcher started in 2003 when I was uh, doing my master's uh, studies. And when I was looking for a topic for my thesis, um, it happened that uh, my advisor then in the person of Dr. Olga Nunez um, introduced me to Dr. Sam James, who was connected, affiliated with Kansas University. And Dr. James was looking for, for a partner, for an apprentice to work on him in studying uh, the biodiversity of earthworms in the Philippines. So this was in 2003, and this is in Mount Malindang, uh, one of the highest mountains in, in the country. That's, uh, I think, 2,900 uh, meters uh, elevation. And uh, how did I, okay, uh, how did I uh, become so interested in, in studying the Philippine earthworms? No? I'd just like to share, uh, to everyone that I really didn't uh, aspire in the beginning to be to be a scientist, to be working in, to, to be having a career track in science. But rather, when I was in, in elementary and high school, I was um, hoping to become an artist. And so I even uh, graduated at the Philippine High School for the Arts in the National Arts Center at uh, in Mount Makiling, Los Baños for my high school and was studying um, visual arts because I was looking forward to, to take uh, fine arts in UP Diliman after. But I received very little support from my dad during that time. And so I had to uh, return home to Iligan City 
where I took and uh, where I studied in MSU IIT, Mindanao State University, Iligan Institute of Technology, where I took the Bachelor of Science in Marine Biology. So, wala pa talaga sa isip ko na mag-aral ng earthworms. No? In fact, my thesis was about community structures of mangroves in, in a certain portion in, in Lanao area. But then when I uh, did my master's degree, when I was pursuing my master's degree, so um, there was a reason na uh, parang gusto kong mag-shift to doing uh, terrestrial research. And then, uh, yun nga, na later on, na meet ko na si Dr. Sam James, and he invited me to be trained by him, and we traveled uh, across the Philippines. Now, I became part of his uh, research project that was funded by the National Science Foundation in the US. And uh, I got a lot of opportunity to travel across the country from, from Apari down to Tawi-Tawi. And it, it was fun, huh? it was very adventurous. And so at first, uh, I was just like anybody else were in uh, talking about earthworms, I, I just see them as there are like only two to three species. And that's it. No? But when we traveled from one area to another, from one mountain to another, I have found out how diverse they can be. And so that's when it started. No? Na I became fascinated in studying uh, the Philippine earthworms. No? So as any biodiversity uh, specialist uh, here in our country, everybody knows that the Southeast Asian region is undeniably a biodiversity haven. And species diversification in the region cannot be understood without considering geological history. And we know how rich no, our, our biodiversity is in terms of the uh, species richness of flora and fauna we're in, we are one of the most highly diverse in the world, and at the same time, one of the uh, hotspots, no? We're in, our biodiversity it is at uh, eminent threat. And so nobody has ever studied earthworms before, no? So uh, in, in the Philippine setting, talking about biodiversity, a lot of studies have been conducted on, on mammals, on birds, especially on insects. But it's kind of unheard of when you talk about earthworms, no? So it was just uh, last decade when uh, the uh, Biodiversity and Taxonomic Survey of Philippine earthworms uh, increased you know, and more became interested. And this uh, figure shows uh, the distribution of Migas colicidae, no? That's the family of earthworms that, that's dominant in Asia as well as the native species in the Philippines uh, belong to. So there have been um, DNA barcodes already that have been collected from various parts, no? So this, is, this data was collected from the Barcode of Life database systems. So you can see that they're actually distributed as well in, in the East Coast and West Coast of, of America. And uh, you can also see them in South America, uh, in Madagascar, in Indonesia, uh, India, and then this portion of Southeast Asia. Okay, so yun yung mga parts where uh, earthworms no, under Megascolicidae have been collected uh, DNA uh, data, molecular data. So medyo marami-rami na rin dito, in, uh, dito sa atin no? uh, since the last decade. So when we collect the earthworms, okay, so to make sure that the earthworms we collect are, are indeed native, because if dito lang tayo sa baba, no, where a lot of anthropogenic activities are, um, what we expect to see are more or less uh, 
in uh, was this uh, in was it, what do you say uh, introduced species, no? So galing sa ibang bansa, like the ones from Brazil and ones from Africa, especially the ones that's been used in in vermicomposing and in vermiculture. No, uh, you may be familiar with the African night crawler. So these are the ones that dominate the landscape in the lowlands where there are a lot of anthropogenic activities. But if you are after the, uh, the biodiversity of earthworms, no, you must go into the uh, pristine forests away from any anthropogenic activities as much as you can. Then you can see there the wonders of how diverse they can be pala. Okay, so when we collect earthworms, okay, so uh, we normally use, use shovels, uh, trowels, and yung bara, no? So, hinuhukay namin, gumagawa, ka, gumagawa ka yung, kami ng mga cakes, no? And then, uh, so, uh, maingat namin, ano, tinatanggal yung lupa, and then we start crumbling them down, yung lupa, so that uh, we can make sure that uh, hindi namin na, uh, natamaan no yung mga earthworms sa pagbubungkal and then we preserve them in uh, be before preserving them we take uh, pictures of live uh, earthworms for ano no for morphological uh, i mean for for uh, documentation no that can be used also for publication later on and then once we have taken the important information, no, yung mga size and etc., then we preserve them and put them, we kill them in 5% ethanol and then we preserve them in 95% ethanol. And for morphological analysis or examination, we make sure that the ones we examine are adults. So they can be seen, they can be determined by looking at the presence of their clitellum. So you can see here the clitellum is the ring you know, that's found in the head part, you know, close to the head of the earthworms. You know? So without it, then the earthworm might still be a juvenile or a subadult. And those are not good for morphological examination since uh, other parts, you no know, other organs may still have not developed well. So for morphological examination, for taxonomic identification purposes, you have to make sure that the ones you examine are adults. And the most important uh, diagnostic characters in earthworms are found in uh, the first 20% of its body from the anterior, uh, from the head part, because the rest of the body would just be composed of its intestine. So you can find there the prostomium. Now you can determine the earthworms you know, where the head part is by observing how it moves. No? As it moves forward, then definitely uh, yun yung head part niya, yung naglilid uh, sa pagmumove forward. And then SA here refers to the spermathecal area. No? So there are pores here that later on would, no, for copulation, would receive the sperm of, of another mate. And then there's also a female pore here that releases the uh, the egg no, that's found in the clitellum. And then there's also male pores after the clitellum, which release the sperm. So by the way, earthworms are hermaphrodites. Now that means to say that any individual possess the male and female organs. But regardless, no, they still require a mate for them to reproduce. But nonetheless, there are also species that can reproduce parthenogenetically. That means to say that uh, even if without a partner, no, their egg for some reason can still be fertilized no, without, uh, without the aid of a sperm. No? So in the lab, uh, we position them uh, in a dissecting pan in a, with a uh, paraffin wax. We pin them uh, in a dorsal, dorsal position and then we cut them open. No? We cut longitudinally as what you can see here on the right picture. And okay, you have to uh, observe carefully ano yung mga organs na makikita mo. No? And uh, they look different from one species to another. Uh, please, 
uh, note that earthworms cannot easily be identified by simply looking at their external morphology. There are students from different universities that approached me and sent me pictures asking for you know, uh, to identify the earthworms. But unfortunately, we can't just simply do that. We have to uh, examine the worms in the lab and then examine their external and internal morphology. We have to dissect them. Okay. So uh, just uh, talking further about their uh, reproduction scheme, this is how they do it. No? So earthworms have their clitellum. And then, so these are, these are the ones in orange. And then, okay, uh, they release their sperm no, in, in this, from these areas and release it towards the uh, spermatical pores of its uh, partner. So you can see in this picture that both of them are actually depositing sperm uh, towards its partner no, uh, to their spermatical pores. And then after that, uh, the earthworms would part ways. So that means to say that the earthworms, both of them have already been impregnated. And once they have separated ways, okay, uh, fertilization has not taken place yet. No? Fertilization will only take place when the female pore would release the egg, eggs. No? And no, through the mucus that, it, that the clitellum releases, and then it pushes the, the mucus forward. And then when it reaches the spermatical pores where the sperms have been deposited, that's the time when, the, the, uh, when fertilization uh, takes place. And then after that, the, the mucus uh, would continue to be um, released out of its body. And then finally, when the mucus has been released out of its body, it solidifies and then it becomes the cocoon. No? So uh, we have not studied yet if like how many individuals are there for each cocoon per species. And that's one important uh, area that uh, we can study of about earthworm biology. So these are Earthworms also, no, uh, ferretimoids under a family Megascolicidae, no, where in from their male pores, they, they, re, they protrude their pennies. So these are their pennies and then position them towards the spermatical pores and then deposit the sperm and then they part ways and then both earthworms have already been impregnated. So that's how they do their reproduction. So as a taxonomist or systematist, one has to be equipped also with a skill in illustration, in drawing, no? because you have to convey to your reader, how do this look like actually? No? So all, although uh, you can also alternatively, you can have very good photos of these organs, but um, some other taxonomists present their work uh, through drawing. Although uh, currently, ngayon, uh, Nagre-require na rin yung mga taxonomic papers for molecular data aside from the drawings and the pictures. No? So you can see here how diverse they can be no? by comparing their uh, morphological uh, features. Okay. So uh, you can see that some earthworms are composed of lots of Spermatheke, no? so maraming spermatheke na nadidiposita na ng, ng sperm. No? Whereas, uh, as I mentioned earlier na may mga, uh, may mga nag -re reproduce parthenogenetically, those, those species don't have spermatheke. So walang mapagdidiposita ng sperm. But regardless, earthworms can still uh, reproduce no? without the aid of the sperm. And so ongoing studies have been conducted to study more about them. But yeah, I have uh, a published work on this as well, wherein some individuals of this particular species 
uh, reproduce sexually, while some individuals of this species can reproduce parthenogenetically. And uh, the, the data are supported with, with molecular uh, data. So these are some of the beautiful earthworms that we have uh, collected in various parts of the Philippines. Now, some of them are white. This one you can see here that this is white and have uh, black dots along the dorsal line. Whereas other earthworms are, are striped, others are pure black or pure brown. And so, and some are really very big, some are really very small. So it doesn't necessarily mean that if it's small, it's it's a juvenile, no? There, no, the smallest one I have uh, described, no, I, I collected from Dinagat Island and I named it uh, Firetima Aksha. Aksha is the uh, Latin word for yarn, we, no, because the small the, the, the earthworm is as small as small as as a yarn, no? Na ang hirap na talagang idaisek. Parang sinulid na lang, no? Um, medyo makapal-kapal ng konti sa sinulid. But I was able to describe it, no? Whereas the biggest earthworms species in the Philippines have been, no, was found in, in Bohol, no? And it's more than, it's almost three meters, I tell you, no? So ganun, I, I just can't, I'll show you the picture yet because we are currently describing it and we will be uh, submitting it for publication. So, gana, no? And some more colorful earthworms. The one on the upper left, okay, is called uh, Archiferetima middletoni. And this has been recognized by the world to be the most beautiful earthworm in the whole world no? that can only be found in the Philippines. No, this is found, okay, endemic in uh, Baler, Aurora. So it is blue in color with white spots and with yellow spots at the center of the, uh, yellow spots at the center of the white spots. No? So napakaganda. And uh, blue earthworms can be found in Tablas Island, and in uh, yung mga islands in northern Visayas, maraming makikita niyan. And this one here at the bottom, no, found in Mount Apo, and uh, also found in Hamigitan, Mount Hamigitan in Davao area. Okay, some more beautiful earthworms. No, they can vary in color and in size and in no their their pigmentation pattern. And this is another picture, no, at, at another angle of the Archiferetima middletoni, no. And I use this as my cover photo because I'm I just uh, love how it looks like. And this is one of my teams, no, who was uh, conducting sampling activities around the uh, Visayas area, and you can see there, no, that they have collected large earthworms. So, ito, ganito, uh, one has to be skilled in drawing, as I mentioned earlier. No? If hindi ka marunong mag-draw, no, you have to train yourself or ask somebody else to draw for you. No? So, this quality of drawings can already be uh, published. No? Ganito mga drawings. No? Kulang lang to na mga labels. But these drawings are earthworms that have been... Uh, collected in Palawan. And we are currently waiting for the acceptance of our paper. No? And uh, anytime soon, uh, we will have our paper of, of the earthworms in Palawan published. Uh, we're very excited about it. Okay. So another thing that I deal with, no, I, I don't only uh, discover new species, but uh, in my work, I also try to explain how did they diversify and uh, spread. No? So I have this work, it's called Molecular Phylogeny and Biogeographic Distribution of Pretimoid Earthworms of the Philippine Archipelago. 
Okay, so um, I put into consideration in this work the geologic history of the Philippines. We're in around during the Pleistocene, around you know, uh, two million years back, you know, when the sea level was low. Okay, um, the Philippine islands are still you no know, are still made up of larger islands, you no, know, because the sea level was still low, you no. Know? So the major islands would be composed of Greater Luzon, Greater Palawan, uh, Negros, Panay, and Greater Mindanao, which covers Samar and Leyte and Bohol as well. No? And uh, this is the phylogenetic tree that uh, I generated using different gene markers. The CO1, uh, 16S, uh, 12S, uh, histone, and uh, I forgot the other one. But at first, okay, I was puzzled, no, perplexed. I, it doesn't make sense. No, bakit ganito yung tree? How do I interpret this? No? Na, yung may mga color codes dyan, ng mga branches, those refer to where they have been collected. No, Whether uh, red for greater Luzon, orange for greater Palawan, and so forth. No? So makikita mo ito, pakalat-kalat yung color coding no? uh, along the phylogenetic tree. But later on, no, further examination shows, uy, may pattern. No? Nag na Nag-form pala ng clade yung mga species that, like let's say, that has a pair of spermatheke in seg intersegments 5 and 6. No? And then, uh, nag-form din ng clade yung ano, yung earthworms that have three or four pairs of spermatheke and another clade is formed no for earthworms that have spermatheke between uh, seven and eight uh, segments no and the bootstrap values supporting these clades are quite strong no so it made sense and then later on i realized na ah ganito pala yun. so Ito yung naging hypothesis in this work, no? That like let's say nine million years ago. So I I associated my work with the work of Hall, Robert Hall, no? He studied the uh, geologic history of Earth through paleomagnetism, and that's how he conveyed, no? How how it looked like, no? How how the islands look like in the past, how the plates have been arranged in the past, no? So in this case. No, uh, I had a hypothesis that nine million years ago, earthworms from uh, earthworms in Mindanao may have originated from Sulawesi, uh, from from New Guinea, and reached Sulawesi, and then after that, from Sulawesi, uh, reached Mindanao. No, so intermittent pala yung movement among earthworms because there were a series of I uh, know, uh, what do you call this? Uh, low tides and high tides, no? Uh, cha changes in the sea level. And another opportunity for earthworms to migrate uh, was around 7 million years ago, uh, passing through no, mainland Asia, through Borneo, and passing through the uh, small islands of Zamboanga Peninsula, Tawi-Tawi, no? Basilan, uh, uh, what, what do you call this? Zamboanga Peninsula and then uh, Panay Island. Another opportunity for earthworms to migrate would be during 3 million years ago, no, via Borneo, via Zamboanga Peninsula and through Mindanao. And the most recent, no, the one that we are familiar of is yung tinatawag na yung Palawan Land Bridge, no, where from the mainland, a lot of organism, organisms have Pass through you no know, Palawan and then enter the Philippines. So, like what I said, intermittent yung migration, no, na mga earthworms, and they have higher opportunity to move when the sea level is low, no. But when the sea level becomes high, no, so they will have to stay in the area. And since the different islands have different ecological uh, features. No? Earthworms, just like any other species, have to adapt to, to such 
uh, environmental conditions so that as many uh, adaptations have accumulated in the species, okay, that's how uh, speciation happens. No? They become uh, morphologically different from their former form. Okay. And yeah. So the Philippines now have more than 200 native species no? known to science from just around 10 species recorded in the previous decade. The pattern of endemicity suggests that more species remain to be detected in the country and that the Philippines may have more than 500 species or no in the entire country no if the entire archipelago is thoroughly surveyed and there must be active dis dispersal of earthworms across islands during the significant drop of sea level during the Pleistocene by the way naririnig pa po ba ako Yes, sir. Naririnig okay. po. Okay. Sige po. Thank you po. And the fluctuations in the sea level, climate changes, and other ecological factors may have played significant roles in the distribution and in the rapid diversification of species. So, uh, ngayon, I do not limit only to working on the taxonomy and systematics of earthworms, but I have to have I have I have to go somewhere, no? Uh, my direction akong tinatahak ngayon, wherein my work cannot be simply, cannot simply remain basic, but I have the desire na maging kapaki-pakinabang sa, sa society. No? So, ongoing and future works. No? So, now, no, I continue to survey the Philippine earthworms. No? Ang dami naming mga nakaline up na mga papers. No, on, on new species in various parts of the Philippines. And uh, I also do molecular phylogenetic studies no? across Southeast Asia. So I have uh, collaborators from Japan, from China, from Indonesia, from Vietnam. And no, para mas maintindihan, a new relationship ng mga earthworms across these uh, different uh, geographic regions. And other works that I do, you know, research works that I do, you know, so I do ecological and biodiversity studies on the earthworms of the Cordillera Mountains, you know, sa, sa <clears throat> uh, Banawe rice terraces. You know? So, uh, the first studies on earthworms in the Philippines started here. No, my uh, complaints about the destruction of parts of the Banawi rice terraces because of the earthworms. No, so nakita namin na it's not actually the earthworms that's the culprit, but um, because of the destructive activities, no anthropogenic activities upland nabubulabog yung mga earthworms na nananahimik and uh, nadidisorient sila and uh, they have to go somewhere else kaya uh, kumakalat sila kung saan-saan thus resulting to destruction of the uh, of some portions of the Banawi rice terraces okay ang sinisisi kasi ng mga tao is uh, peste yung mga earthworms no kasi nakakasira sila nakaka Sira sa palay nila, sa income nila. So they have to be eradicated. So nakita namin na ang pinaka-cause pala are the anthropogenic activities above no? that cause disorientation and yung pagkabulabog ng mga earthworms sa natural habitat nila. Okay? And also, no? um, yung African Nightcrawler, no? scientifically known as the Eudrilus eugeniae, is a popular vermiculture commodity in the Philippines. So vermiculture of the African nightcrawler is reported to have a return of investment ranging between 28.5 to 37%. So maganda pala siyang pag, pagkakakitaan no? sa mga nag-vermiculture dyan. No? Studies show that vermiculture production can only be viable if the value of the resulting vermicompost 
which is a byproduct of the earthworm production process is considered. So like for example, yung isang, ano, isang lata ng, ng petroleum ng, ano, ng earthworm is already like 10 to 20 pesos, depende kung saan ka nagbibenta. So pwede siyang pagkakakitaan. No? So the African night crawler, however, is a species that's introduced to the Philippine soils in 1980s. No? Nakitaan siya ng magandang benefit no? sa, sa pagpapakain sa mga tilapia. Particularly endorsed by Dr. Uh, Guerrero, no? academician Rafael Guerrero, and in endorsed the Department of Agriculture. So that's the time no? na hindi pa ganun ka wide yung knowledge natin about the native species that we have. But now na may around 200 species na pala tayo ng indigenous earthworms in our country. So that's what I'm pursuing too. No? Na explore, it harness ano yung mga potential benefits that we can get from them. So non-native species may alter soil nutrient storage and availability and may be detrimental to populations and communities that inhabit forest soils. No? So nabubulabog nila yung ano, na-outcompete nila yung mga native species. No? So as I mentioned, the popularity of the African night crawler in the Philippines as a vermiculture commodity is due to the gap in the knowledge of the indigenous resources that we have in the past. No? And there had been no scientific study on the utilization of indigenous earthworm species anywhere in the Philippines for vermiculture or vermicon composting until re recently. No? So uh, this is a paper no? uh, called entitled Earthworm Bioturbation Stabilizes Carbon in Non-Flooded Paddy soils at the risk of increasing methane emissions under wet soil conditions. So this have been, this work has been, conduct, has been conducted at IRI in Los Banos. Na nakita nila ng, ng potential yung earthworms, no indigenous earthworms sa pag improve ng ng growth rate ng mga halaman, no and uh, on uh, methane emissions and etc. No. Uh, okay, uh, also earthworms offset straw induced in increase of greenhouse gas emissions in upland rice production. And just uh, recently, no, we had this partnership with, with the Western Philippines University and UP Diliman, exploring the potential of indigenous earthworms in degrading disposable diapers to address the problem in uh, solid waste management. No? So as earthworms are natural decomposers, no? uh, may, may mga nare-report na rin kasi na may mga uh, microorganisms, no? mga gut microbiota in other invertebrates that can uh, digest plastic. No? So as earthworms are natural decomposers, um, chinek namin if there are also microorganisms in the gut of the earthworms that are capable of degrading uh, the plastic in disposable diapers. No? We know that, like let's say the plastic can degrade for so many years. No? It, it's so slow, no? umaabot ng mga 40 years bago matotally uh, degrade siya. So we are looking for ways no? how to expedite the decompos decomposition process. And also no, exploring the potential of the vermicasts of the indigenous earthworms in the enhancement of growth in crops. So gin ginawa namin to sa Palawan and uh, ngayon ginagawa din namin dito sa MSU na Awan. No? And uh, initial results show, no? uh, like ginawa din to sa Kiri, initial results show na um, the presence of earthworms in the pots no, where the crops are grown uh, really enhance the growth of crops no? through bioturbation and the release of vermicast, which are used as uh, no, uh, organic fertilizers. And talking about earthworms, no, indigenous earthworms uh, for, uh, no, for production of vermicast for organic fertilizers, 
uh, we visited the farm of Dr. Raimundo Lucero in Los Baños. No? It's called Polia Tropica. And these are his indigenous earthworms that he cultivate. And uh, these are the products, no? vermi products, okay, compost products na dinidistribute niya uh, in different uh, in this ACE hardware. No? You must be familiar with ACE hardware in different branches of SM malls across Luzon. And nahirapan pa nga si Dr. Lucero kasi napakala, napakalakas ng, ng demand ng products niya. And when I asked him kung alam niya ba yung mga species na uh, kinukulture niya, he said hindi niya alam. So I wrote a paper about it describing the earthworms and now we are waiting for the publication of, of the description of those species. Once they once the paper has been published, no? so my my pangalan na, no? my known as a science and as a society, young earthworms that are producing these products. Also, we have ongoing project exploring the potential of the earthworms as vermi meal, no? so aquaculture commodities. Commonly, ang pinapakain no? as alternative meal sa mga tilapia ay yung African night crawler. But we are exploring uh, if indigenous earthworm species uh, can also compete with the African night crawler and therefore uh, can be viable no? as, as a business na uh, once na, na developing technology and the transfer sa mga communities, the communities will have the opportunity to, to generate income no? uh, through uh, vermi production. And exploring the potential of earthworms in the degradation of rice straws. Okay? Uh, kasi ito, tinatapon lang itong mga straws. And itong mga straws actually, uh, matagal silang mag-decompose. No? Uh, usually sa mga farmers, sinusunog na lang nila to, Thus, uh, contributing to uh, greenhouse gases emission. No? So... Ngayon, we're looking for ways na hindi na susunugin yung mga straws, but rather uh, kakainin na lang ng mga earthworms. And also exploring the indigenous earthworms for potential natural products that may be utilized in the field of pharmaceuticals, no? discovery of natural products. So for example, no, there are no, studies in other countries on the utilization of earthworms. No? Uh, for for vermi, uh, I mean for for pharmaceutic pharmaceuticals, they have been already explored. Uh, for for example, this one, no? uh, anti-cancer potentials of peptides of silumic fluid of earthworm Eugenius eugenie. That's the African night crawler, no? So na pag-aralan na nila anti-cancer potential. And uh, another paper. Okay, on antifungal and anti-cancer effects of a polysaccharide protein complex from the gut ba uh, bacterium isolated from the earthworm Dendrobena veneta. No? So uh, I'm closely coordinating also with microbiologists from, from UP Diliman that study the uh, no, no, uh, gut microbiota of, of earthworms. And in explore namin ano kaya yung mga uh, potential benefits na maupuha natin sa gut microbiota na to. Coming from the gut of the earthworms. No? Also another paper, vermi pharmaceuticals and active proteins isolated from earthworms. Okay? And this one's also very interesting. No? So differential expression of three labial genes during earthworm head regeneration. So they conducted this study by cutting uh, an earthworm species, no? Uh, uh, Perionix excavatus. Na hinati nila sa tatlo yung katawan ng earthworm, no? Into head, trunk, and tail. And uh, they observed that um, as days went by, uh, 
okay, the head part of the earthworm, he started to grow a body and a tail. Whereas the trunk, okay, the cut trunk, okay, developed a head, started to develop a head and a tail. Whereas the tail also started to develop a trunk and a head. So after 22 days, yung isang earthworm na hinati-hati, no, naging tatlong individuals through regeneration. At pinag-aralan ng mga scientists yung mga genes responsible for their regeneration, which also have application no? sa, sa medicine, no? sa human or, or other fields. And also no, exploring the potential of indigenous earthworms in the bioremediation of soil contaminated with hydrocarbons and heavy metals. No? Sa mga, mga mined out areas, no? um, studies have already been conducted no? in restoring the quality of the soil after it has been mined out. So one paper okay, uh, published, they showed the contribution of earthworms to PCB bioremediation. Another is earthworm-assisted bioremediation of organic contaminants and soil bioremediation, combination of earthworms and compost for the ecological remediation of a hydrocarbon polluted soil. So may proposal kami ginagawa ngayon, exploring ano naman yung magagawa ng indigenous earthworm species. No? in remediating uh, polluted soils as they are exposed to uh, hydrocarbons or uh, heavy metals. So again, no take home message, no? have passion with whatever you do. No? Put your heart in it and then it will just pay off in due time. And it's also important to collaborate, no? to expand your horizon of of partnerships and your no, horizon of your research. No? Uh, just like what I do, no? I'm, I'm a systematist, taxonomist. I specialize in evolution and biodiversity, but um, I also collaborate with uh, microbiologists, with soil scientists, with aquaculturists, no, and etc. So to expand and have your research more, uh, your research be more meaningful. No, and uh, most importantly, no, when you do your research, no, you look forward to having your works published, and then if you have products, no, have them patented, and no, yung mga products, no, may kabuluhan na magagamit ng society and have economic impact as well and can serve people, no? uh, makikinabang yung society, yung mga communities, maramdaman nila yung effect ng ginagawa mo sa research. And then uh, yung collaborations, no? uh, places and partnerships, meron kang mga local partners, national partners, as well as international partners para maramdaman yung ginagawa mo, masite yung mga works mo, not only locally but as well as internationally. And mag, makakatulong yung, yung work mo in developing policies like in uh, uh, conservation of the natural resources. Okay, as well, no? most importantly, yung work mo have to have social and economic impact. No, na maramdaman talaga ng mga tao. Uh, not only feeding one's curiosity, but as well as... Um, Ayun, matutuwa yung mga tao sa ginagawa mo kasi nararamdaman nila yung ginagawa mong research. Okay? So, I thank the National Science Foundation uh, through Dr. Sam James, uh, Nagao Foundation, who has partly supported my research studies, uh, Chad Dare too, uh, as well as uh, UPLB Museum of Natural History for hosting my webinar talk today. Thank you very much. Ayan, maraming salamat, Sir Noni, for that very inspiring, very interesting um, uh, talk, no? Especially, well, 
unheard pa sa akin to be to be honest ay bibihira lang siguro makarinig tungkol sa ating you no know, sa earthworms in general and especially in particular yung ating indigenous sa uh, earthworms and uh, i think uh, this would be a very good uh, time and opportunity for our students to ask some uh, questions for you to answer and our chat box is already open for your uh, questions let me just read this first so we have a question from Mr. Edgar Castañares um, can we consider space and environmental factors as determinant for the reproduction of earthworms in captivity Okay. Yes. Uh, so, uh, thank you for your question, uh, Sir Edgar. Um, when we culture earthworms, no, we extract them from their natural habitat. So, as much as possible, when we culture them, we have to to capture, no, ano yung mga mga conditions, environmental conditions that would make the the growth and reproduction of the earthworms efficient no so it's very important na uh, kung saan mo sila kinuha and uh, i-culture mo sila okay uh, i-adapt mo rin uh, put into consideration yung yung environmental conditions no yung mga physical chemical parameters na uh, ma-include mo ma-consider -ma mo so that um, continuous at hindi nabubulabog yung, yung habit nila, yung growth and reproduction nila. So, uh, like for example, uh, yung earthworms mo na na-collect somewhere, uh, medyo sparse yung distribution nila, but nilagay mo sila, no? kinulture mo sila, nilagay mo sila sa, sa isang maliit na space lamang, um, baka mahirapan silang mag-adjust because hindi sila sanay na magsisiksikan. So, uh, that's just one of the examples. But yeah, you have to consider as well, no? Yung organic matter content, yung moisture content, yung pH, yung temperature, and other stuff, no? Na mamimik mo yung natural habitat nila doon sa vermiculture uh, environment mo. Yan po. So Okay. So in essence, Sir Noni, I uh, let us let us put this at this way. Um, for example, nag collect ka ng, ng indigenous uh, earthworms. Uh, essentially, kung anong saan siya ng galing, like yung soil, dapat dun mo din din siya ilalagay if ever you are going to transfer it to a new location. Tama ba? Opo. So. Uh, galing doon sa site kung saan namin kinuha yung mga earthworms kumukuha mm -hmm. din kami ng soil samples mm -hmm. and bring them to the lab and, and study them and then uh, we will try to uh, uh, mimic or simulate yung features ng mga soil like for example we would want to expand the area of the vermiculture so uh, dapat ma-establish na muna namin yung, yung, yung habitat ng earthworm so that they can thrive well and rep reproduce for, for mass production. I see. Okay. So uh, a question from Willem Joshua Tan. Uh, she, she has uh, three questions actually. Let's take the first one. So does the African night crawler compete with the uh, native earthworms? For example, uh, uh, given a certain uh, area or site, would would it be uh, a competitor? Okay, so that's a very good question. No, um, an African night crawler, uh, well studied in biology, niya, and it is a cosmopolitan species. No, sa, sa tropics and sa subtropic areas. No, so kahit saan mo man siya ilagay, talagang nagta thrive siya. Kaya it it becomes a very effective. Uh, vermiculture commodity. So, on the other hand, uh, in comparison with the, with the native species, the native species are more of endemic and more constrained into a particular area mm -hmm. na hindi mo siya pwedeng ilagay lang kung, kung saan-saan. 
So um, if you put the African night crawler in an area where the natives inhabit, uh, definitely uh, compete nila ang mga native species because talagang napaka effective na mga competitors na mga African night crawler. So ang isa pang nakakatawa na comment last time no? when when I was in UP Diliman no my my vermiculture facility doon and then uh, African night crawler yung kinukulture nila and then I asked them if uh, they're also interested to to culturing cultivating uh, native species mm -hmm. in the campus they said na sir binawalan po kami ng Department of Agriculture na na uh, mag-alaga ng native kasi ini-invade ng mga native yung African night crawler when in fact um, dapat mas aalagaan natin yung indigenous yung native na meron tayo mm -hmm. rather than the introduced species because the introduced species definitely have the tendency to become invasive as well and outcompete the uh, indigenous species. Okay. So, um, uh, another question from uh, Mr. Tan. Um, siguro ano lang to, perspective mo na to, are the native earthworms declining in the wild uh, based on your um, observations, uh, your expeditions? Uh, they, are, they are diverse in the uh, secondary and primary forests. But since our natural forests no, are declining, our natural forests across the Philippines are declining, okay, it goes with it. No, na, uh, kumukonti din sila. So part ng work namin is um, hinahabol namin na bago, bago maubos, no, uh, huwag naman sana, uh, we are looking for, no, for ways na ma-restore natin yung mga kagubata natin. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic na um, pag-aralan natin no, yung mga indigenous species that we have so that we could use this data to help develop no, strategies para makonserve natin ang mga natural habitat natin. Matutulungan natin yung DNR and other government agencies and NGOs in protecting our natural environment. So yung last question niya, I think uh, partly na sagot mo na siya, pero siguro let's give it, uh, 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 quant let's quantify it. So are these native earthworms easy to rear in captivity? So siguro from a scale of 1 to 10, how easy? Uh, sa ngayon po, With 10 actually, being the easiest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sa ngayon po medyo nahihirapan po kami. Uh, so may, may tatlong uh, species kami na native na kinukulture sa MSU na Awan. Uh, gusto ko mag-shout out sa kasama ko si Eric Jan Florida no? <laughs> who's ano, uh, yung nangunguna talaga sa, uh, sa pag-hands-on ng pagkukulture ng mga indigenous earthworms namin for the purpose of ano, uh, mass production. No? Uh, honestly, medyo challenging po talaga. Unlike rearing cultivating African night crawler, napakadali lang. Hayaan mo lang yan, iwan mo lang yan. Later on, after a month, nagsikalap na yan dyan sa, sa yard mo. But yung mga native, napakapihikan talaga nila. Mm -hmm. uh, yung, yung question kanina na, kung i-rate, uh, mahirap sagutin yun because uh, what, what species are you referring to? Mm -hmm. no? So may mga species na, ano, in, may indigenous species na uh, na nakitaan namin ng potential na pwede siyang mag-compete ng uh, with the African night crawler and the ones I mentioned no na yung sa Los Banyos sa Folia tropica that's being cultivated by Dr. Raimundo Lucero um sana mabisita niyo yung sir floor no yes po uh -oh. okay so um sabi niya na mas efficient pa yung production ng ng native earthworms niya compared to that of the African night crawler so it really varies from one species to another. But most importantly, yun, ma once makapture mo lang siguro yung, yung optimum requirement for its habitat, no? uh, magiging confident ka na uh, sa pag-aalaga, pag-cultivate ng mga native species. Yeah, I think, I think ang 
I think ang very important for everyone to appreciate is that um, dapat continuous ang scientific inquiries no? to make sure that everything will be documented and published uh, to serve us yung ating references or guides. So as of now, I think uh, Dr. Aspes um, uh, efforts are put into you know studying. So I think uh, siguro in, a, in the very near future, we hope uh, some uh, very successful uh, research na ma-accomplish ng group ni Dr. Aspe and we look forward to that. No? Especially usong-uso na ngayon ang vermicost, uh, vermicomposting, lalo na uh, maraming plantito at plantita na ngayon. <laughs> Okay, so from uh, from Mr. Greg Rule, um, ang question niya ay, have you looked into how much uh, earthworm diversity change uh, with elevation or land use or forest types? So any any information which you can share regards to, with regards to that? Yeah, ginawa ko yan sa master species ko, no? So I conducted my thesis sa Mount Malindang in Zamboanga Peninsula and I put into consideration the the elevation mm -hmm. no and across elevation meron ding changes in temperature changes in in the soil biochemistry so definitely those also affect the distribution of earthworms mm -hmm. and so far ang may pinakamataas na diversity is sa mountain area if you go higher, doon na sa bandang tuktok, uh, bumababa din yung diversity ng mga earthworms. And dito naman sa bandang baba, uh, lesser din ang diversity because of the presence of the introduced and invasive species. Yun po. Okay. So I hope uh, that answers your question, Mr. Greg. So from Alisa May Ebora, um, curious lang daw, uh, are there any compendium or catalog? existing for Philippine earthworms uh, which uh, she can use for reference? Uh, so currently, uh, nasa mga published works lang yun. Mm -hmm. uh, those are made available online. You, you can check those or you can check uh, my name through Google or through ResearchGate and or uh, you can contact me directly through my email address and uh, we're actually no. I I just got an invitation from from a group of earthworm scientists, no, mm -hmm. at the international community uh, to join them, no, uh, cr creating a catalog, uh, uh, a compendium, yeah, a, a database for all the earthworms around the world, and so napakalaking uh, karangalan, no, that uh, na invite po tayo and. Uh, in that way, mas uh, mapapakilala pa natin yung, yung kayamanan, yung treasure ng natural resources that we have in our country. Yeah, I think um, we, we really expect sana magkaroon agad doon. And uh, if ever, hindi pa siya lubaba, Sir Noni, uh, anong suggestion mo for anybody out there, especially the people in the audience, uh, how would they able to contribute to, you know, uh, at least putting together this compendium or catalog? Okay, so uh, just feel free to approach me, no? Mm -hmm. uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, wala talagang ibang gumagawa pa ng earthworm. You know? Although there was one, I, I, I have a friend no, from uh, who graduated who obtained this PhD sa De La Salle University, sa Taft, uh, but uh, lumiba na siya uh, mm -hmm. in, in doing uh, this work. No? So ngayon, ako na lang talaga. And um, yeah, just uh, feel free to, to communicate with me. And um, I'm, I, I'd be happy to share the, ano, mm -hmm. the uh, references that I have. No? I, I have this a whole uh, li list of collection no and even some mga previous works no yung mga collections sa Luzon and yeah dito sa Mindanao at malaking gap pa ngayon actually sa ngayon ang ang sa Visayas Islands mm -hmm. so i'm inviting no fellow researchers 
across the Philippines and the students uh, in different universities across the Philippines to, to uh, try to explore uh, this part of science, exploring the, the taxonomy, systematics, and biodiversity of earthworms. And uh, I'd be happy to, to work with you. No? So currently, no, may mga, uh, I, I work as a co-advisor for, for two students in UP Diliman. And also, I'm collaborating with, with a university in, in Bohol and as well as in uh, the Western Philippines University. So, uh, in expand ko din yung, yung, yung horizon ko as, as to uh, collaboration. So, so, I'd be very happy uh, to, to get in contact with you. Yeah, yung mga students dyan, challenge yourself. Diba? Take up yung gantong discipline ni Dr. Aspe, especially na, yun nga, um, kumbaga si Sir Noni ay endangered species na rin. <laughs> Lagi isa lang siya, di ba? So, uh, way, sir, uh, yes po, uh, yes po. May dadagdag pa po ako. Uh, mm. Sa UPLB lang mismo, no? uh, may mga studies, no? I, I visited the library there and uh, mm -hmm. chinek ko, yung mga gumagawa ng thesis, there had been previous studies on, on earthworms and biodiversity and uh, I also talked with uh, Dr. June Lit. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sir uh, June. Yeah, and um, yeah, sabi ko sa kanya na ano, um, ang dami namin pwedeng uh, gawin na collaboration with, with UP, Los Baños, Museum of Natural History. In fact, soon we will be, we will be depositing specimens in the Natural Museum, uh, Museum of Natural History in Los Baños. That's good to know, sir. Thank you. So uh, from Darrell Acuna, uh, Sir Aspe, did you find a species in the Romblon Island group and Buswanga. I think, I, think, I think it's Buswanga. Buswanga Peninsula in Panay that are closely related to those species that you have seen in Palawan. Um, yes, because he thinks that uh, it is the same with tarantulas. Uh, I think I think he's, he's a biologist too. Uh, he was already to... He already observed that in tarantulas uh, between probably in the Romblon Island group and the uh, Buswanga Peninsula, uh, which led to that uh, hypothesis. So what are your comments on that? Yeah, we, we made collections sa, sa Tablas Island, sa, sa Romblon, sa uh, what island is beside ano? Marinduque. No? So may mga collections kami dyan before. Now, I will still have to examine those. No? I will st still check my samples. Ang dami kong samples ngayon na uh, naghihintay para ma-explore. Ma but uh, isa din sa mga challenging namin actually is uh, challenging experiences was uh, doing sampling around the Visayas mm -hmm. because napakahirap magbitbit ng ethanol uh, passing through the ports. no? Airport or or sa uh, port area, sa mga bapor, no? shipping ports. Uh, kasi yun nga, uh, highly flammable ang ethanol. So minsan napipilitan na lang kami doon na bumili sa area, but wala ring supply. Yeah. No? So napipilitan kami gumamit ng, like let's say, isoprofil alcohol, ganun. So pag uwi namin, in just a few days, we find out na, uy, nagkandasira yung mga collection namin. So that's why, no, I... I'm I'm into collaborating now with mm -hmm. with universities, different universities across the Visayas Islands. Uh, para no magagawa ng mga fellow faculty researchers nila and mga students, and then we can work something out. No, na hindi na necessarily na magbibit bit kami ng but uh, ako na lang or sila yung magta travel dito and we work together. No, those are alternative approaches that we can do. And through that, no, mas, mas mapalawig pa natin yung horizon natin na mas marami pa ang magiging involved in doing this research. Uh -oh. uh, yeah, the same experiences we have also in uh, during our some of our field expeditions. Mahirap ka mag-transport ng uh, chemicals that are not allowed uh, you know, inside uh, airplanes and uh, ships. So a question from Charmeline Ruth Castillo Vicente. Um, 
uh, she attended a webinar about vermicomposting and um, the resource person said that our natural earthworms do not cultivate the soil like African night crawlers do. So in your opinion, what species of earthworm from our country can compete you know, with that of the African night crawler? Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, no? uh, the earthworms that we have in our country across the archipelago are highly endemic. So constrained lang sila in, in specific and limited areas. So just like yung kay Dr. Lucero, for example, sa Polia Tropica, sa Los Banos, um, nakita niya yun sa sariling backyard niya. No? At yun yung pinaparami niya. At uh, effectively, nakakapag-supply siya, no? nakakapag-mass produce siya. But those earthworms he rare, he, he cultivate, may not necessarily be successfully be cultivated if you bring them somewhere else. Kasi iba naman yung uh, soil uh, conditions in other areas. So yun yung sinasabi ko na we can try to explore what we have at the local level. And then since yung, yung lupa doon, yun yung natural habitat niya. So you may try to explore no, na paparamihin sila in their natural habitat. So ganun po. Okay. So um, a question from Jamel Abato, Dr. Aspe. Are there endangered earthworm species in the country? Were you able to identify these from your samples? Uh, sa ang region sila sa Pilipinas makikita if there are? Uh, so sa ngayon, wala pa tayong na-determine na, na endangered earthworm species. Because sa ngayon, na, nasa ex, ex, explorative phase pa lang tayo. No? Tingnan pa natin kung mm -hmm. anong meron sa area na to. Ganyan, no? so, but definitely... If the habitat is is degraded, no, so uh, you can my implication is that the earthworms in that habitat may also be endangered as well, hmm. especially that highly endemic na sila. Ganon po. Ay, oh yeah. So, siguro indicator na lang siguro muna as hmm. if, as of this uh, moment because. Uh, uh, we assume that parang data deficient lahat, no? Yes. yes. Uh, it, the, what we know about uh, our indigenous or native earthworms are not enough to say or to categorize them as, uh, uh, you know, uh, endangered or vulnerable or another, cat another category. Uh, a question from Joseph Conrad Senya, sir, in vermiculture, um uh do different foods like leaves fruits etc do they have different effects uh on the quality of the compost so if so can you recommend uh, what uh, the, the foods that you should uh, give to um to these earthworms i think uh, probably let's just uh, confine ourselves this question to african night crawlers so, may recommendation ba kayo for food? So, uh, as long as as it's ano, uh, well decomposed, yung, like let's say leaf litter, it doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily matter. No? So, sa, for example, yung African night crawler, sa kinukulture din siya sa Western Philippines University, actually, ang ginagamit nila na Ano eh, yung pagkain, no? pinapakain nila sa mga African night color ay yung mga paper trash nila. Mm. No? So, uh, what do you call this? Uh, gina, uh, ano yung tawag yun? <laughs> yung, yung, Sinishred. Sinishred. Sinishred nila yung mga papers mm -hmm. and yun yung pinapakain nila. No? But first of all, no? uh, para kainin talaga ng mga earthworms, uh, the food must be pre-decomposed first. No? Kasi uh, dadaan pa yan ng mga phases, magiging acidic pa yan as, as, as it mm -hmm. goes through decomposition. And di nila masyadong kakainin yan if it's still highly acidic. No? But if it's uh, thoroughly decomposed already, then yun na yung ano, uh, prepared na siya uh, na ipakain. Regardless of what, what type of food it is. It can be yung mga 
uh, kitchen waste mm -hmm. no? ganon and in fact um, when i was still affiliated no with western philippines university in in puerto princesa palawan i talked with uh, the the a city official there no uh, yung menro yata nila na i i promoted yung idea na um, yung mga food wastes galing sa market i-collect at gagawa ng common na mm. vermicomposting facility so ganun na mapapakinabang mapapakinabangan ng mga communities as alternative uh, livelihood okay opportunity so i hope that answers your question uh, joseph uh, for a question from Chester Alan Maidem, uh, good morning, sir. Can you can a certain earthworm species in an area uh, tell the environmental status of that area? Uh, for example, um, the presence of pollutants. So, okay. So sa ngayon po, uh, hindi pa hindi pa po tayo uh, dumarating sa ganong pace, but definitely, ito ang masasabi ko mm -hmm. na if there are there is presence of african nightcrawler or yung brazilian earthworm yung pontus collex corethrurus definitely the area is degraded ah ganun ba okay so okay uh, for everyone to know uh, pag may african nightcrawler or yung brazilian daw uh, the area would be degraded so, uh, question from Lourdes Angalao. Uh, hi, Doc Doni. Congratulations to this uh, interesting and informative uh, work that you have shared. Okay, uh, her question is, are there invasive introduced earthworm species? So, that could result to environmental degradation. Of course, your African nightcrawler is uh, introduced, but can, can it also be... Uh, considered as invasive already? Yes, it is. Uh, together with the ano, no, yung Brazilian earthworm, yan yung uh, dalawa sa pinaka-invasive uh, na mga species. Anywhere, no? as, uh, across the tropics, hindi lang dito sa Pilipinas. Mm -hmm. uh, they are also, also well known in, in other uh, tropical or subtropical countries. And yeah, uh, they have the tendency to become invasive, just like what happened. No? There's an incident in Bukidnon. No? There's this vermiculture facility uh, cultivating African nightcrawler. But then uh, there came a time na, na mismanaged, na, na pag iwanan yung ano, and then nagsikalat yung mga African nightcrawler. And then uh, when we visited the area and looked for uh, indigenous or native species, uh, wala na kami makita. Uh, bawat buntal na gagawin namin yung African nightcrawler. Ang, ang nakikita nyo. Okay. So from Mary Elaine Lee, uh, how can we contact you? Uh, maybe you could share your email address. Uh, shout out nyo na lang dito sa okay, so webinar. Okay, so I'll post my email address here. So while uh, Sir Don is posting his email address, May follow-up question si William Joshua Tan. Sir, uh, anong species ng earthworm sa Banawi rice terraces yung problematic daw? Anong species? Uh, actually, maraming species, no? Um, ano, yung nagre-reklamo yung mga tao mm -hmm. uh, because binubutas nila yung, yung mga rice terraces resulting to the crumbling down of portions of the rice terraces, no? But as like what I mentioned earlier, um, it's because of the activities above, mm -hmm. na uh, yung mga cutting of no, uh, unregulated cutting of trees, na nabubulabog yung mga earthworms. Uh, it caused them to to be uh, this. What the, what was the term? Uh, the migrate or the, the migrate, no? Mm -hmm. uh, forcefully, <laughs> na na po force sila to migrate and go somewhere else, no? So, uh, maraming species yun. Uh, you can check through our, ano, uh, our book on uh, the field guide of the 
Earthworms in the Heirloom uh, Rice Terraces. Nice. Uh, that's published by IRI. Uh, it's available online and it's an open access book. Okay, so just go to iri.org and probably check out for the their publications there so that you would uh, see the, the species that are of concern. So uh, from Zainuddin uh, Akar, uh, sir, can you share the criteria of the soil where uh, which will be the best place to dig for in finding uh, the earthworms, especially if you're targeting one species? So, may criteria po ba daw? Um, again, uh, depende kung ano no, uh, iba-ibang earthworm species, meron silang iba-ibang habitat preferences. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No? So, uh, mayroong mga ay yung we we studied no uh, how how the physical chemical parameters are related with the distribution of of the African nightcrawler and the Pontus colex corethrulus yung yung invasive na Brazilian earthworm and we saw that uh, hindi na significant sa kanila yung yung uh, soil pH yung temperature, organic matter content. So that means to say na ah, nakaka-thrive talaga sila just anywhere else. No? Uh, whereas for, for the native species, uh, pihikan sila. But again, depending on the species. No? But based on my study that I conducted in Mount Malindang, uh, yung soil pH, for example, uh, is not significant no, sa distribution nila. But again, this may not necessarily be true to all. It mm. may only be true to the ones in Mount Malindang. No? On the other hand, there have been reports as well in, in, in other countries na may mga earthworm species that love high pH, pH. sa soil nila. No? And then earthworms may also be ano, sensitive sa soil temperature, organic matter, moisture content, as well as yung decomposition of sand, silt, and clay. No? Definitely for clay, if mataas yung content ng clay, uh, yung soil nun medyo magiging ano siya, uh, compact, compact and it would not be very good for, as habitat for, for different earthworm species. So again, um, you have to do this. No? You, if, if, if you want to know what earthworm species you have to deal with the the specific or the, the particular earthworm species, examining how they are related with the environmental conditions. Right. A question from Ian Niel uh, de la Cruz. Sir Doni, I know how tough for you and your team to explore almost all corners of the Philippines uh, in hands-on collection of these uh, earthworms. So um, the question is, uh, did did you collect all of your all of the uh, specimens that you have described, did you collect them by yourself or together with your team? Okay, so uh, may mga areas para rin kaming hindi kami nakapag-collect. No? Uh, mm -hmm. Sa Bicol area, wala pa akong collection. But uh, other researchers like in the person of Dr. James and Dr. Yong Hong in Korea, no, may mga na-describe na sila mga species but hindi pa thoroughly. So that's worth examining, no? Um, and a lot of places, no, uh, sa, sa Cebu, sa Sikihor, uh, di pa namin na explore yan. Okay, so another question kanina is, ano, no, uh, do I do it myself? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, when I was still part of the project of Dr. Sam James, no, that's uh, funded by the National Science Foundation, uh, hands-on talaga akong ano, uh, to be there and do the collection. But um, it's more efficient, no? Yung collection mo, if uh, you, you expand yourself, you, you replicate yourself, you, you train other people, and uh, makuha din nila yung skill mo. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yung gusto mong mangyari. So that would be more efficient, no? And again, as, like what I mentioned, uh, collaborate. Para uh, mas magawa natin tung work na to, uh, effectively and efficiently. Yeah. All right. Okay. 
So a uh, question from Kamar Amiril. Uh, wondering what is the impact of soil transport transport for the geographic distribution of earthworms? Um, for example, soil from Surigao being transported to Japan. Uh, any study on this? I think um, siguro ang iniisip niya is like, um, for example, meron kayong nakuhang earthworms uh, from certain place and then pag-aaralan mo or pag-aaralan niya sa Japan, so dadalhin niya yung soil, transport the soil along with the with the earthworms to, to Japan. So meron bang impact uh impact yun in terms of studying and of course the geographic distribution of earthworms i think side question is like what if for example uh, katulad dong <laughs> ito touch base lang to kunyari sa dolomite issue di ba nagtransport sila ng dolomite from uh from one province dinala niya sa manila bay uh, would that be a factor in the distribution of earthworms later on basically siguro ang ang sinasabi ni Ms. ni Kamar Ameril is that um uh, if there's malaking uh, movement of land from one place to another uh let's say yung katulad nung sa dolomite di ba from one province dinala sa manila bay uh, would that be would, would that have a big impact in the distribution geographically of uh, earthworms Okay. Uh, first of all, hi to Sir Kamar Hamiril. <laughs> We're mm -hmm. friends, and he's pursuing his PhD in in UP Los Banos. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, no. The question is uh, difficulty in transporting earthworms or uh, soil, no? Uh, hindi ko pa nagagawa na transport I transported to Japan when I was when I was uh, doing my PhD in Japan um, ang ginamit ko ng mga specimens ay yung collection namin uh, from ano from the National Science Foundation funded project mm -hmm. no? so I asked Dr. Sam James to tinanong ko siya na oy kumusta na pala yung mga collection natin ano nang nangyari doon and since he's working not only in the Philippines, no? uh, working on the biodiversity of earthworms in the Philippines. Ang dami niya ni, Brazil, in India, Europe. So sabi ko, akin na nga yung mga samples na kinulek natin. And yun yung pag-aaralan ko for my PhD. So uh, pinadala niya yung mga preserved samples no? in, in ethanol. Pinadala niya from the US to Japan para yun yung pag-aaralan ko. But Definitely, uh, we talking about uh, bringing in soil samples uh, depends on your objective. No, if you want to bring live earthworms mm -hmm. to Japan, uh, and so you have to have soil samples with it, right? Uh, I have not done that yet, but uh, first thing first, you have to have the the permits, the necessary permits, no? Sa collection like. You have to have a gratuitous permit. No, you have to uh, divulge it, like let's say it's a DNR, and uh, the transport permit is necessary for you to uh, bring in samples. No, uh, like sa Japan, so requirement ang, ang gratuitous permit for you to be issued uh, an export permit naman, no, para makakapas through siya sa mga ports. Sa, sa Bureau of Custom, Customs and then uh, tatanggapin siya doon sa port sa Japan. But personally, I have not done that yet. No? Yung, pag nagpapa-analyze ako ng mga uh, soil samples ko, um, marami naman nearby, like um, dito sa Emission na Awan or uh, sa CMU, the Central Mindanao University and other institutions sa sa DNR or sa DOST. Yun po. Okay. So, uh, I think this is a follow-up. Uh, if I am not wrong, Kamar says, uh, if I am not wrong, meron po kasi massive you know, export in quotation marks. 
export of soil from Surigao to Japan related to mining. So, oh. what are your thoughts on that, Siguro? When you say export, I don't like like commercial like, export, para ganon. Massive. So white white sand, ganun ba? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, they do that. No mining, mining mm -hmm. kasi. So, um, hindi ko lang. Uh, definitely, my my environmental implications yan. Pagdating don, but uh, Japan should know, no, na um. May mga environmental uh, implications and impact yan. So they are very careful also as to introducing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. species. Hindi lang no? naman kasi earthworms ang madadala ng soil. Eh, yeah. Right? Mm. Nematodes also... mm -hmm. and uh, other invertebrates. No? Mm -hmm. But uh, de depende kung anong gagawin nila sa soil. If, if a process nila... Um, no, may, may extraction na gagawin sila doon. So, definitely, uh, they would do segregation and, and, and isolation. So, uh, but I, I think uh, Japan would be very careful mm -hmm. na uh, hindi nila hahayaan na may, no, uh, mamismanage nila and dispersal of species. Uh, soil invertebrates, for example, to to Japanese soil. So, yeah. may mga ano naman, may mga Pitik mga precautionary measures and, silang and uh, safeguards. Yeah, that's right. Pero thank you, Kabar, for pointing that out. Um, unheard pa sa akin yung ganyan na you know to to make uh, the operation efficient, di ba? Instead of um, uh, doing the production here of, for example, uh, extraction of the deposits or the the minerals or the, the, the precious metals. Ang in-export na lang nila ay yung lupa, no? And then dinadala na lang sa ibang bansa. Doon na lang nila gagawin. So, well, it, it's, uh, you know, interesting to know that. Okay. So, uh, okay, a uh, question. Uh, I think Siguro will be accepting a few more questions. So, from Kim Desena. So, is it possible to eradicate invasive earthworm species that are already established in some areas in the Philippines? Pwede ba yun? <laughs> eradicate. Uh -huh. Parang... Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's possible. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, first of all, you have to establish your objective. No, what's the purpose? What what is it for? Mm -hmm. And if you want to eradicate for the purpose of, ano kasi uh, nagiging peste na sila, then I guess you you have to do it manually. No, some other uh, scientists, no, uh, they they collect earthworms by exposing them uh, through uh, formalin. No, uh, magpapakal sila ng formalin so that the earthworms would come out. So that's one way. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can do that. But uh, definitely may, may effect din yan na? sa ibang other organisms. Na, um, na mabubulabog din sila, uh, madidisplace, and uh, it, it will also affect the floral composition or the soil, uh, biochemistry, and so forth. No, But... Uh, Again, it depends on on your objective, no. Uh, some others uh, uh, collect earthworms by exposing them through radiation, no. Papayanigin nila yung lupa, and so earthworms uh, would would come out of the soil and uh, they would collect them. But so far, wala pang ganong intervention. As far mm. as I know, wala pang ganong intervention na nagagawa in order to to remove invasive species from from an area okay uh wala na tayong uh questions here from dito sa chat box pero i have one one or two i hope uh you can still accommodate accommodate it so a question ko ay um where is it so sir uh vermiculture lang po ba ang naging main reason for the introduction of exotic species of earthworms in the Philippines? Uh, may iba pa bang reasons? So actually, it was introduced uh, during the 1980s mm -hmm. by Dr. 
uh, Rafael Guerrero. Mm -hmm. no? si Academician Guerrero. Um, Pinomote niya yung African Nightcrawler for the purpose of feeding his tilapia. Uh, he is the so-called tilapia king when it comes to uh, culturing them. Mm -hmm. Well-known uh, scientist in the Philippines. And he tried doing that no? using, using the African Nightcrawler. So yun yung uh, naging purpose nun. And then later on, nung nakita nila na may maraming cast, yung vermicast, yung dumi mm -hmm. ng, ng African Nightcrawler, nakitaan nila ng potential na, uy, pwede pala siyang gamitin as alternative fertilizer. No? Na organic fertilizer. And ngayon, binibenta na nga yung ganun. And um, may bumibili din ng mga African Nightcrawlers per kilo no? in volume. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, yun yung pinaka purpose non. It was ano, it was introduced for for a reason. But uh, may mga ano na rin, although undocumented, but may mga complaints na rin of the of how invasive they can be as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Uh, so are, yun yung trinay nating ina address ngayon in, in yes. this study. Are there cases now na mayroong pang iba pang uh, exotic species of uh, earthworms that are being introduced uh, intentionally, both intentionally or and unintentionally. Meron bang mga cases? Uh, have you heard of them? Like, kasi uh, yung, for example, yung trade in the ornamental uh, or, ornamental plant, uh, potted plants. So there are cases na meron mga am amphibians, no? exotic amphibians nakakapasok sa bansa na nandoon sa loob ng potted plant. So may cases din ba uh, uh, concerning or related to exotic uh, species of earthworm na nakakapasok sa bansa through those kinds of uh, channels? Okay, so other than African nightcrawler, mm -hmm. uh, may ana may ibang species din. Uh, na ginagamit for vermiculture, no? yung tinatawag na uh, Perionix excavatus. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's introduced from, from India. No? So that's intentional introduction. Uh, with regards to unintentional introduction, yung, yung uh, Pontoscolex corethrurus, yung Brazilian earthworm, where in um, ina-attribute nila yung yung introduction ng species na yon sa Philippine soils is uh, during the ano yung Spanish occupation. Mm, okay. No na, na uh, yung mga Spaniards uh, they traveled from one place no from from South America and then uh, crossed through the Pacific Ocean and uh, landed uh, through uh, in the ano um, Philippine Islands. And then uh, upon their expedition, no, nakaka nagko-collect sila ng mga halaman or mga hayop. Mm -hmm. And then yung mga halaman may mga of course may mga soils yun. Of course. And then uh, they plant it when they reach the Philippine Islands, they they plant it somewhere, they introduce the plants and then together with you know with the plants, they also unintentionally introduced the earthworms. And so yun yung naging culprit sa introduction ng ng uh, Brazilian uh, species, Pontos Colex Corethrurus. Okay, thank you, sir. So we have no more questions uh, in our chat box. Maraming sir Noni for this very engaging uh, talk and uh, thank you very much sa lahat ng members ng ating audience who attended in today's uh, webinar and I hope na uh, nagustuhan nyo yung topic and uh, if you have other questions and further questions, uh, just uh, write Sir Noni. Uh, binigay niya yung kanyang email address na doon sa chat box. So before we close our program, let us just uh, present Sir Noni with the uh, virtual certificate of recognition. Let me just uh, share my screen. So while Sir Floor is mm -hmm. uh, fixing it, um, I'd like to, ano na rin, no? na if, if you're interested to, to work collaborate with me yeah I'd, I'd be very glad to to be in contact with you uh, so I I posted my email address uh, chat box 
and you may also PM me uh, via Facebook. Thank you, Sir Noni. So, um, the Museum of Natural History, uh, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Research and Extension here at UP Los Baños, College Laguna, uh, awards this certificate of recognition to Dr. Nonilon M. Aspe for serving as resource person during today's 2021 MNH Biodiversity Seminar entitled Unearthing the Philippine Earthworms, the Shift from Basic to Applied Research, held today, April 7, 2021, from 10 a.m. to 11.30, actually 12 a.m. Philippine Standard Time via Zoom. So in witness whereof, the signature of our director, Dr. Marian P. De Leon, is here and to affix. So maraming salamat, Sir Aspe. Sir Noni, maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, Dean Po. Yes, and uh, make sure that you are able to answer our online evaluation form. It will be the basis of our of the certificate of uh, participation, which will be issued to you, sent to you via email. Uh, I hope you've, you've already uh, clicked on the, uh, the link that I have provided in the chat box, uh, but you can still... Uh, uh, type uh, bit.ly slash 2021-bss-eval and we will accept responses uh, until 3 p.m. today. Uh, check out our website at mnh.uplb.edu.ph. You could drop us an email at mnh.uplb at up.edu.ph. We are on uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Uh, we will be uploading the recording of this webinar later, hopefully today or tomorrow morning. And check out our Wikipedia and TripAdvisor uh, entries. Just look for the handles UPLB Museum and UPLB Museum of natural history. And with that, maraming salamat po, Sir Noni. Again, we hope that we could, uh, you could also provide the uh, other webinars in the future. And uh, sa ating mga audiences uh, who are regularly checking out our webinar. So maraming salamat po. And uh, happy lunch, everyone. Thank you very much din po sa lahat na nandirito. God bless po. Thank you, sir.